All righty, Dave Morris alongside my colleague from the Oklahoma, Ben Felder. We are live on the second floor of the uh, Oklahoma Capitol, which is cleared out a little bit. Um, one thing about teachers, their routine, by 4 o'clock, they have things to do, just like the school bell has sounded, perhaps. Yeah, it was packed and loud, and we'll get into that, but uh, the last couple of days, the walkout by 4 o'clock has pretty much ended, at least the presence here at the Capitol. The bus is loaded up, and they, they go out and rest up, I guess, for another day. If you have newspaper deadlines, if you have a 6 o'clock broadcast, this is great. This is a great <laughs> event to so cover. Well. When I last left you, it was noon, day two, Tuesday, and as I walked out, teachers from Moore had marched from Moore to the Capitol, and they were just arriving. They blew right by me. Now teachers from Tulsa are going to march. This leads us into what happens next. Well, more days at the Capitol. Yeah, you don't plan a 110-mile march <laughs> if you think that this is going to end anytime soon. And their schedule shows that it's going to take about several days uh, to get up here, making stops along the way. But yeah, teachers have announced. Uh, we had heard uh, a few weeks ago that they were planning this as to kick off week two, if there was a week two for the walkout. But it looks like they've bumped that up to Wednesday morning. So that tells us that uh, obviously the walkout's continuing on Wednesday. There's a thought that this is going to continue on uh, for more days. Uh, schools continued to announce that they would remain closed tomorrow. Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Edmond, a lot of the bigger districts uh, said that they would be closed on Wednesday. So it's going to be more of the same here at the Capitol tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see what the crowd is like tomorrow at the Capitol on Wednesday, day three. For today, Tuesday, day two, large crowds. The idea was uh, to speak to the legislators today since they were in session this morning. So they, uh, they started with a rally inside. The rally outside was pretty big too. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. I don't really necessarily like to get into the crowd guessing games. I mean, the OEA said that they topped 30,000. Uh, you know, there's been some debates about that. But regardless, we, what we have seen is one of the largest, if not the largest demonstrations at the Capitol in quite some time. Coming into today, the big question was how many teachers were there going to be here today? And the fact that OEA had said that they were moving the rally from outside to inside, you thought, well, hey, they're preparing for a smaller crowd. I don't know what yesterday's number was, but I, I feel like today's was pretty equal to yesterday's because it did look a little smaller outside, but not by much. Inside was a lot more crowded. I mean, there were, I mean, at times, Capitol officials had to shut down the entrances because the building had reached capacity. Um, you know, there was a heavy trooper presence as there was yesterday, and a lot of the things they were doing was just crowd control, making sure that there were at least some lanes. Uh, they continue to talk about, hey, we need to clear these lanes or we're going to have some trouble with the fire, fire marshal. Uh, you know, doing crowd control, going into lawmaker offices where the hallways are, where their offices are. Um, so it was packed, you know, shoulder to shoulder inside the Capitol. And outside, it was still a pretty big crowd. So if, if crowd size is any indication, the resolve of teachers has not died down at all since Monday. We chatted at noon about this. The tone changed yesterday, a little bit of celebration today, some determination, and that led to some tensions. You mentioned uh, crowd control. There was a sit-in and uh, a few incidents sparked around that time. Yeah, I mean, we heard some reports that uh, the the House legislative assistants were told to go home in the afternoon because of some incidents. Um, some of the statements that I've seen, I, I, I did not have any look at. I, don't, I didn't get a, a look at what incident was being referred to. And the information that's come out of uh, House staff has not been really clear what those incidents were. Everything that I've seen is that today was intense, but still pretty peaceful. Um, and it was more intense on the inside, which I think makes sense because in here is where the lawmakers are. A lot of times you saw the crowds rally around just outside the doors of the House while the House was meeting, and we'll kind of talk about that in a moment. And then in the afternoon when the Senate was meeting, they kind of shifted to the other side of the Capitol or other side of the building to meet outside the, the doors of the Senate. Um, outside was still pretty festive. There was uh, a DJ playing music. The band directors were out there, everyone's favorite so far. Um, and so it was still pretty pretty festive atmosphere. But inside, yeah, I would say that it definitely the intensity level uh, uh, did tick up a notch or two. We saw a video by Representative Kevin McDougal, which made the rounds as he uh, kind of the pointed the finger back at the teachers. Let me tell you something. I voted for every teacher measure to fund them all last year. It took us a year and a half to pass it. And now they come into this house. They want to act this way. I'm not voting for another stinking measure when they're acting the way they're acting. Our kids follow their example, and this is the example they set. I understand the frustration, but this is not the way to go about it. You're losing support of people who supported you all year long. All year long, we supported you. And now you're going to come here and act like this after you got a raise? Go right ahead. Be pissed at me if you want to. 
I believe he later deleted that video and apologized, but uh, I think he was making a point of, uh, hey, the teachers have this stance, we're seeing how they're acting, and thus, it didn't go over too well. No, he kind of he did a, a, a self video where he basically said, "Hey, if teachers are going to act like this, I'm not going to vote." I think the exact quote was something along the lines of, of "one more stinking measure" or something like that. Uh, you're right; he did delete it, but you can't delete every anything in, in today's era. Um, and so that video was being circulated amongst teachers. Obviously, it kind of adds fuel to the fire. And I think what I think the frustration that that. Uh, the representative had. Uh, I was talking to some other lawmakers that said, you know, I wouldn't put it in those terms, but we kind of share some similar frustrations. I mean, this is kind of starting to turn into a little bit of a partisan issue in the sense that, uh, and we'll talk about this in a moment, but, you know, Democrats were, were pushing for some revenue raising measures in the House today. Democrats uh, rejected that offer. Um, you know, so the teachers were starting to talk a little bit more pointly towards uh, Republican members of the legislature today. You've teased to it twice. I'm talking with Ben Felder from the Oklahoman about action today at the state capitol as teacher walkouts uh, happened for day two. Ardell Denwalt was in there in the uh, the House chambers, I believe, as another measure was attempted but denied. Yeah, there's been uh, a lot of focus has been put on the uh, capital gains deduction. If you do away with that, uh, there's an idea that you can, you can raise at least a substantial amount of money. Uh, I mean, teachers have talked about a variety of revenue raising measures, but because there actually is a bill with this one already, um, there's been a lot of focus towards that. A lot of teachers I said were that I talked to today said they were specifically lobbying lawmakers to pass this bill. Uh, it wasn't on the schedule to be heard today. Uh, Democrats tried to get it on there by changing the rules, uh, which they would have to, which would have to be approved by the. The, lead, the floor leader and, and then the, the rest of the members, um, those votes were denied. So the, the maj Republican majority House uh, voted against the idea of even hearing that. We, we have convened in special session, so I would invite you to take that question up with the floor leader after special session has uh, adjourned. Representative Bittman, for what purpose? Mr. Speaker, you keep cutting off my microphone. You can silence me, but you won't silence me. Representative Bittman. <laughs> So Democrats are going to continue to bang the drum that, hey, you know, they're not even willing to take a vote on the measure. Um, there's been some talk about, you know, that in last week's tax package um, that uh, drummed up over $400 million for teacher pay raises and some other funding, um, that there might have been some deals cut to say, hey, we'll make a vote on this, but we're, if we don't have to make a vote on this, so we'll have to wait and see what that looks like. But, uh, but yeah, as the House was voting on there, teachers outside were, were, were chanting. You could hear those chants on, inside um, at, for, for a time. I was in the press gallery there, and the viewing gallery teachers uh, had filled the place. They, they applauded uh, when Representative Inman um, brought up the idea of the bill, and they were told that they, you know, they, had, they had to remain silent. I can have the sergeants escort the chambers, clear the chambers. Members of the House will come to order. Decorum will be kept at all times. So then they began waving their hands to kind of show support for it. Um, but outside, it was pretty intense. People, conti our teachers continued to, to shout as loud as they could to make sure that lawmakers could, could hear them. We saw after the House vote, Democrats walk out raising their fists in the air, some of them, uh, and telling teachers, hey, continue this up. The only way that something's going to change is if you guys uh, remain committed. And teachers said they were willing to do that. So that's what we learned today. The question is, what's next? I believe session tomorrow on Wednesday begins at 3. It's an afternoon session. Yeah, I mean, right now we don't have any indication that the legislature is going to adopt any any new measures. Uh, I mean, we saw the statement from the governor on Monday basically saying, hey, we have to work within our means and, and kind of in, implying that right now the means don't uh, allow us to do this. And I think we've said this before, but this is an election year. And yeah, in some ways that may put pressure on some lawmakers to find a way to increase public ed funding. There's a lot of public support for public education. But on the flip side, you have a lot of lawmakers, particularly some of these Republican lawmakers that are facing primary challenges in June uh, where they're going to face uh, opponents from the right who are going to challenge them and you know they just approved a, you know a series of, of tax increases last week that they're going to have to go home and justify that to some constituents who, who may not have been happy about that so the idea of approving even more uh, tax increases um, you know you're not seeing a lot of Republican lawmakers you know qu you know quick to quick to jump on that bandwagon so it remains to be seen but once again I mean teachers seem like they're in here for the long haul the march is starting tomorrow from Tulsa uh, teachers are going to gather back out here today. I feel like tomorrow is probably going to be, a, a, you know, a repeat of what we've seen in the last couple of days.
And we'll be here for continuing coverage. Ben Felder, of course, will be all over it. Tim Willard on the education side back in uh, the Oklahoma. He was in the office today writing away. Now, we saw Nate Billings out there, as, along with Tim Money, right there in the fray this morning when things were, you know, uh, kind of crowded over there in the corner. Multimedia efforts you can find on newsok.com for photo galleries and video coverage as well. Ben, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet, as always. We mentioned Dale Denwald. He's back there uh, making deadline right now for more capital coverage. Again, ongoing coverage at newsok.com, our various social media platforms, and in upcoming editions of The Oklahoma.